Now we go to anaerobes. Anaerobes are um, produce, they produce abscesses and usually they are clostridial infections. So for clostridial infections, we have clostridium perfringens. Clostridium perfringens is actually uh, famous for causing cellulitis and gas gangrene. So when a patient comes to you, with cellulitis or gas gangrene and you are asked what is the most um, probable etiologic agent it's clostridium perfringens and uh, because of these enzymes collagenase and hyaluronidase they degrade the extracellular matrix contributing to the invasiveness it secretes 14 toxins and one of the most and the most important one is the alpha toxin alpha toxin or phospholipase c is the one it degrades lecithin and sphingomyelin and we know that lecithin is a major component of cell membrane thereby leading to death of rbc or cell necrosis it can cause brief diarrhea when ingested cellulitis would be foul smelling foul smelling because it is anaerobic for the gas gangrene it has fluid exudates and very characteristic would be no inflammatory cells even though it has fluid exudates, there will be no inflammatory cells. Again, because it is anaerobic, it forms large bullous vesicles that rupture and it forms gas bubbles. That's why it's called gas gangrene due to the bacterial fermentation and the myonecrosis caused by the uh, lecithin degrading alpha toxin would present with soft blue black friable and semi fluid consistency of muscles due to the release of alpha toxin again for the clostridium tetany which is very famous for causing tetanus the pathogenesis would be the tetanospasmin the important um, enzyme inhibits the release of neurotransmitter GABA and we know that GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter and if you do not have inhibition you will have continuous contraction leading to spastic paralysis, para paralysis and therefore tetany. For Clostridium botulinum, it causes botulism um, and it binds to ganglicides on the motor neurons. The pathogenesis is that it cleaves the very important synaptobrevin which mediates fusion of vesicles containing the acetylcholine causing the release of it and eventually leading to flaccid paralysis. Clostridium botulinum is used in Botox in causing facial paralysis, so no wrinkle formation. Clostridium difficile causes pseudomembranous colitis. Pathogenesis, we have toxin A. It's the one that stimulates chemokine production and attracts leukocyte. Toxin B is the one that causes cytopathic effects and actually used in the diagnosis of Clostridium difficile. So if you are asked which of the following toxins, is used for the diagnosis of Clostridium difficile infection. Is it toxin A or toxin B? You should answer toxin B. For the picture, this is a box-shaped form, Clostridium perfringens. This is Clostridial cellulitis caused by perfringens again. This is gas gangrene caused by the cellulitis. The caused by not cellulitis, but Clostridium perfringens. When you speak of uh, obligate intracellular bacteria or the atypical bacteria, we have chlamydia. It's the most common bacterial agent for sexually transmitted infection in the United States. It is caused by chlamydia trachomatis. Again, we have serotypes A, B, and C. Trachoma, it's an ocular infection in children presenting as a chronic keratoconjunctivitis which can produce or progress to blindness. Serotypes D or K is the one that use uh, that cause urogenital infection and inclusion conjunctivitis. For the serotypes um, L1, 2, and 3, it can cause the very famous lymphogranuloma venereum. So, L for L. L1, 2, 3 for lymphogranuloma venereum. Again, the leading cause of infertility since it is the number one cause of STI. Leading cause of blindness because of trachoma. 
and often asymptomatic. Diagnosis, you can use amplified DNA and fluorescent monoclonal antibody screening. Manifestations, uh, chlamydia urethritis in males or epididymitis. Uh, unlike in gonorrhea, uh, Neisseria gonorrhea, urethritis can be the cause of uh, for the uh, urethritis is symptomatic while for the trachomatis or chlamydia it's actually asymptomatic in, ma in males. For the females, we see cervicitis and urethritis which may lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. This is so, when you are asked, what is the um, manifestation, common manifestation of um, chlamydia trachomatis infection in females? Usually, pelvic inflammatory disease leading to infertility and ectopic pregnancy. Again, pathogenesis, it exists in two forms. Number one, the infectious form would be the elementary body. This is the metabolically inactive. It is an infectious form. Again, but metabolically inactive. And taken up by the host cell through endocytosis. Inside the host cell, it will form reticulate body. And this reticulate body is the one that is metabolically active. For the uh, bacteria, the bacteria prevent the fusion of endosome and lysosome. So, since it prevents the fusion of endosome and lysosome, it escapes um, intracellular killing. Lymphogranuloma venereum caused by the serotypes L1, 2, and 3 can cause chronic ulcerative disease. It is a mixed granulomatous and uh, neutrophilic infiltrates. In the genital area, a papule may form and when it becomes inflamed, it will form bubos. The skin overlying the lymph node will form an ulcer. So, when the papule enlarge, the papule becomes an enlarged node, enlarged nodes, it will form bubos and then it will ulcerate. Initial clinical manifestation would be swelling of the lymph node, inguinal lymph node. So, for the swelling of the inguinal lymph node, upon examination, you will see stellate abscesses surrounded by epithelial cells. Presence of suppurative lymphadenitis would be also characteristic of chlamydia. Extensive scarring would be fistulas and strictures. Diagnostic test would be the following. So for the um, groove sign, this is actually a groove sign. Groove sign is the, the one that uh, the initial clinical manifestation of trachomatis wherein there's a swelling of inguinal lymph node uh, where you see uh, shallow linear fibrotic depression parallel to the inguinal ligament. So if this is the inguinal ligament, you will see two um, two elevation of inguinal of lymph nodes and with, when, you, when you have this as the, this is also a groove sign large lymph nodes in bo both groins and females uh, in males frequently inguinal lymph node is enlarged in females the perirectal lymph node is enlarged again for males it's the inguinal lymph node for females it's the perirectal lymph node that is enlarged for the rickettsia uh, it's a vector borne obligate intracellular bacteria and uh, Mostly transmitted via insect vectors. We say Q fever. It's from rickettsia. Transmitted through the aerosols. Rocky mountain fever. It's actually transmitted via the dog ticks. And then the uh, epidemic, epidemic typhus is transmitted by the body lice. Close contact with people who without changing clothes. And scrub typhus would be mites can cause the epidemic typhus which is from the body lice can is caused by the rickettsia prowazeki the scrub typhus from the mites will uh, is caused by the orienta chuchugamushi the spotted fevers is actually from the dog ticks can be uh, caused by rickettsia rickettsii and others the 
pathogenesis, there's entry of into the endothelial cell by the endocytosis. It will be escaped into the cytoplasm since they are obligate into cellular bacteria. And then formation of acidic phagolysosome. There will be proliferation of endothelial um, cells. And then for the typhus, it will lyse. Or for the Rocky Mountain uh, spotted fever, it will spread cell to cell via actin mobilized action. Again, for for the um, scrub typhus or in, scrub typhus will lyse and from the uh, RMSF or Rocky Mountain spotted fever, it's via the actin mobilized motion. The severe manifestations are due to vascular leakage, secondary to the endothelial damage. So, when you are asked, this is one of the most frequently asked questions, the um, severe manifestations are due to what? It is due to vascular leakage, secondary to the endothelial cell damage. Uh, because of this vascular leakage, some of them would, would um, present with hypovolemic, hypovolemic shock and pulmonary edema and some may even go to ren renal failure and then coma. They initiate, or no, again, they, the innate immune response responsible would be the NK cells which produces interferon gamma. And then interferon gamma and uh, tumor necrosis factor would be producing uh, nitric oxide. This is a um, a histology, a blood smear of a rickettsial infection showing granulocyte containing Ehrlichia inclusion. Ehrlichia is actually from the word uh, mulberry, the mulberry shape, and uh, inclusions have predilection for neutrophils and macrophage. For the diseases under rickettsia, we have the Rocky Mountain spotted fever caused by the rickettsia rickettsiae by the transmitted to humans via the dog ticks. Patient presents with petechial or hemorrhagic rash. This rash extends to the entire body, including the palm of the hands and soul. This is the hallmark of the RMSF. So you see petechial or hemorrhagic rash, which extends to the entire body and eventually to the hands and soles of the feet. Usually, the petechial rash is prominent in the lower extremities, particularly in the legs. The major cause of uh, death among patients in the RSMF, RMSF rather, is ARDS or um, Respiratory Distress Syndrome. This is a picture of a vascular lesion. So we have said severe manifestations are due to vascular leakage, secondary to endothelial cell damage. So it involves large uh, vessels and may microinfarct. So there is microinfarction. You can see prominent uh, necrosis here of vessel wall in the Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. This is a thrombosis vessel and vasculitis as a result of vascular injury. Perivascular coughing is actually a chronic inflammatory cell surrounding that. This is a perivascular coughing. It's like it's, it's like uh, can you imagine a cough for uh, measuring blood pressure and this is a cough surrounding the blood vessel. A cough is actually chronic inflammatory cells. For the scrub typhus or caused by the orient orientsia chuchugamushi, it's transmitted by mites or chiggers. Chuchugamushi, chiggers. It's milder form of typhus. And there is transitory rash and rare vascular necrosis. The third one or the last one would be the endemic typhus. Endemic is actually caused by the lice. If you say scrub, it's caused by the mite. If you say endemic, it's caused by lice. If you say scrub, it's caused by chuchugamushi. When you say endemic, it's caused by prowazeki. It can cause skin necrosis, gangrene. Especially if the fingertips, nose, earlobes, scrotum, penis, vulva. It causes internal
causes internal hemorrhage or ecchymotic hemorrhages and formation of typhus nodules. The most prominent would be a small vessel lesions in focal areas of hemorrhage and inflammation in various organs. This is actually a picture of typhus nodule in the brain. Imagine a proliferation of microglia and it passing or crossing the brain.